Cruise news time, and look, y'all, I'm, I'm a little ticked off. I am very annoyed and tired of media sites only telling half the story, and especially telling half the story when it comes to infections on cruise ships right now and uh, what's going on with crew members, infections in the crew members. Um, yeah, it's annoying. Are we running out of crew members? Cruise news. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lita Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. Welcome. Welcome to the 11th of January. Welcome to a Tuesday. Uh, welcome to another day in that cruise life. And today we're going to talk about all of the hubbub uh, surrounding cruising right now. Now, look, I got a feeling I'm going to get on a roll with the main cruise news story today. So let me jump in early and quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. Ding, ding. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Look, I am your conduit. I am your lifeline to that cruise life. And the way that you get the sweet nectar of cruise news, like a like a bird trying to pollinate, a bee, bees pollinate flowers, like a bee trying to, all I'm saying is, look, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. Be a part of the Loca fam. We're making our way to 18 million subscribers. That's the 2022 goal. You can be a part of that number. When the saints go, Mar I, I got to get to this little, I got to, What's wrong with the media? Okay, here we go. Hold on. The dominant story, increased cases on cruise ships, uh, increased cases on crew members, and all that goes along with that. There is so much uh, media hype, hyperbole, sensationalism that's one-sided, uh, working its way around the, the info sphere. I'm making up that word. Uh, you know, look. Do a Google search and you're going to get uh, 10 negative cruise news stories for every one positive. That's that's just me estimating, but that's the deal. So what, what is actually going on right now? And do we need to be concerned as loyal cruise fans? Uh, well, here's the deal. Uh, infections are certainly up, right? I shared the number with you from the 30th of November of 2021 to the 14th of December. Uh, the cruise lines reported 162 cases to the CDC. Then fast forward the 15th of December to the 29th of December, and that number had gone from 162 up to over 5,000. Omicron made its way to the U.S. and hit the cruise ships hard, and they hit it primarily in uh, the crew members. Now, we didn't really put those numbers in perspective. We just said, wow, 162 to 5,000, that's a pretty big leap. Holy moly, what's going on? The CDC, looking at those numbers, increased the level of warning from level three to level four. But we didn't really talk about 162 was really good. Uh, that's that's the thing. The cruise industry had been running at those low numbers for a long period of time. 162, really good. Uh, the 5,000, was it good or was it bad? Certainly more than 162. So in comparison to that, that's bad. But when the infection rate on cruise ships continues to be under 1%, when on land uh, you've got infection rates popping up all over the place at much higher rates, uh, what do we say at that point? You know, or do we just dismiss it? And so first and foremost, when we're looking at cruising right now, you still have a very low infection rate on cruise ships, you still have the cruise lines doing a very good job of keeping people safe on cruise ships. And you see an industry that is not shutting down. Uh, there are reported cases on every cruise ship that is operating in the United States right now, uh, but none of those have risen past the threshold where those cruise ships are shut down, where those cruise ships are overwhelmed from a medical perspective. Uh, cruising can continues to go forward. But the big concern that I hear from a lot of people is what about what about the crew infections? Uh, what we know is that crew members are getting infected at a high rate. And depending on the cruise line, the, those crew members are being quarantined and then crew members possibly move to another ship for their quarantine. And is, is that a big deal? Are we going to run out of crew members? And what I haven't heard in any of those discussions is how long will the crew members be quarantined? Now, we know that the cruise lines are working in conjunction with the CDC for their protocols. And so if we look at the latest guidance from the CDC for people that are infected with this Omicron variant, it should give us some indication of how long the quarantine period will be. 
This is the guidance from the CDC. If you test positive for COVID-19, this is what's happening to crew members. If you test positive for COVID-19, regardless of vaccine status, stay home for five days. If you have no symptoms or your symptoms are resolving after five days, you can leave your house. Continue to wear a mask around others for five days. So for five days, you gotta, you gotta isolate. But after five days, if you still have no symptoms, you don't have to isolate. Here in the second part, if you were exposed to someone with COVID, which is a fairly common thing going on with the crew members now because they live in such close proximity, uh, if you have been boosted or if you completed the primary series of Pfizer or Moderna within the last six months or completed the primary series of J&J &J within the last two months, wear a mask around others for 10 days, test on day five if possible. If you develop symptoms, get a test and stay home. So they're saying that close contacts don't even need to test. Now, of course, on the cruise lines, close contacts are definitely being tested. And then beyond that, if your situation is even worse, if you've completed the primary series of Pfizer or Moderna over six months ago, we know that these vaccines are waning off. So six months, that's that's getting to be too long in the tooth for these vaccines for Pfizer and Moderna. Or if you completed the J&J &J over two months ago, J&J &J wanes even quicker, or you're unvaccinated, stay at home for five days. After that, continue to wear a mask around others for five additional days. If you can't quarantine, you should wear a mask for 10 days and test on day five if possible. That's the guidance right now. If you test positive, you only have to stay home for five days and then you can go back out and wear a mask and go back to work. Now, I don't know how long the cruise lines are gonna keep the crew in quarantine, but I would be shocked if it's much different than the guidance from the CDC. And guess what? Crew members are wearing masks all the time right now when they're working anyways. Let's say worst case scenario, crew members that test positive go into isolation for 10 days, test negative, and go back to work. 10 days of isolation, it doesn't sound fun. Five days of isolation, it doesn't sound fun. But when it comes to, oh no, are we going to have a shortage of crew members? We're not talking about people being quarantined for 30 or 40 days. That's what's so frustrating with some of these news stories. It's like, crew members move to hospital ships. What will happen? They'll go there for five days, and if they test negative, I would assume they would get to come back to work. It's so annoying to me that people just want to project stuff out there that's not what the, what the guidance is or what the protocol is. Certainly, uh, the quarantine on a cruise ship, it must last forever. No. Crew members have been fully vaccinated. Many crew members are boosted. Uh, much of the reports that we have is that the crew infection is asymptomatic. That means crew members are not showing any sign of sickness. And it is all a matter of riding out uh, the quarantine of five days and then being able to come back to work. Again, the cruise lines may be more conservative than that. They may be keeping their crew longer in isolation, but I would be shocked. I would be shocked if that isolation for asymptomatic crew members, once they test negative, I would be shocked if that was longer than 10 days because uh, what we've seen from the cruise industry is uh, they follow what the CDC says. Many times they go above what the CDC says, but uh, for this one, when it comes to getting crew back to work, I would assume that they would get them back to work as soon as possible, as soon as it's safe, as soon as they test negative because uh, the crew needs to work. The crew doesn't want to be in isolation and uh, certainly the cruise lines probably don't want to pay people to to be in isolation, which they are. Uh, so yeah, it's, could we just have both sides of the story a little bit, please? Boom, that's your cruise news. What do you think? Uh, are you worried about a crew shortage? Uh, are you hearing this side of the story? Uh, am I just a raving lunatic today? I don't know. Uh, leave a comment below. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. Look, you can show whether or not you enjoyed it or support the show by hitting the like button. Or if you've got malice toward the show or disdain, or if you just got a cold black heart, you could hit the dislike button. But either way, uh, I got to met out a punishment if you don't hit the like button. And today's punishment is this. Uh, you will be working on a project where you're mailing out something and you want to use uh, the whole roll of first class stamps that you purchased. Uh, but the thing that you're mailing out, every one of them weighs 1.2 ounces. And, and you need it to weigh less than an ounce to use the first class stamp. And so now you're either going to stand in line and put individual postage on 100 packages or just use two stamps. You're double stamping. Nobody wants that. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido.